Off at the second attempt in the JT McNamara Ladbrokes Munster National and heading for the first of 16 fences. Westerner point towards the inside with our little look, Moy Henna, internal transfer, and Dr. Duffy. Dr. Duffy is down. Dr. Duffy gone at the first. Davy Russell yet to rise as they head into the turn. Yes, delighted to be joined by Davy Russell this evening. Davy, how's things? Not too bad, Kevin. Yeah, I see you, 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 find a good, you found a good substitute for me anyway. Yeah, Just we did, yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> oh, you're, you're a hardy nailer, Dave. Ah, we're still missing you, though, Davy. We need you back. And I, and I. And I <laughs> <laughs> hey, how's uh, how's the injury? How's the recovery going? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. I'm up and going and doing everything that I'm able to do. But it's just obviously, it's all contraption to see on me for another bit now. And um, I suppose I know an awful lot more on the 17th, uh, the 17th of December. Um, let's go back up uh, for more x-rays and um, hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, they'll take this, they might take this off me. But Fran, Fran has been through it, so um, he, he, might, he might come uh, be, be one of my, my physicians. He might let me know how long more I have to stay in the shock. Oh, in, indeed, Dave. There's a reading up in today. We had a very similar injury and... Uh, you, of course, had the traction, which uh, I didn't speak to you about this beforehand, but it's not a pretty experience, is it? Uh, no, it's, it's, it, you know, it wasn't even that sore. Um, like the pain, it wasn't that painful, but it's just a feeling. It's an ab- abnormal feeling. And I'd say my body was just kind of trying to scream at me, what the hell is going on? Um, but uh, the doctors were gas, like they were just there and uh, they were really, really nice. And uh, the best, the, I was looked after so, so well from the very second I hit the ground until I walked out of the hospital. And even still now, you know, I was, we're just so, so lucky. But uh, I was lying there and uh, one, of the, one of the vertebrae was dislocated. So they were kind of talking away that they, it looks like they're going to have to put me in traction. So I had a rough idea what traction was. Um, and if anybody wondering what it was, it's just like the last scene in um, Braveheart when William Wallace is <laughs> on the table and they're, they're stretching them away. So uh, they, were, they had to drill bolts, to, they had to drill in, in here into my head and, um, and hang weights, weights off, take an x-ray every hour and uh, keep adding weight to the to the injury and uh, or to the keep adding weight to the to the the bag fill it with water and every hour would come and i'd say taking it off now and it's in no another hour another hour and then kind of after about eight or nine hours i fell asleep so um and woke up and uh, it was still on yeah so it was just a really strange feeling and uh yeah, that was just one one part of it, but it, it done its job. And then because when they were operating, they wanted to go in the front, and the the vertebrae was obstructing it a little bit, so they had to straighten it up. So that was that was one part of it. And then I, I, you know everything else was fine. I, I got on my feet pretty quick um, after the once I woke up from the from the operation, I was on my feet and. I started walking up and down the stairs and in the hospital and then, you know, I was out there pretty quick. So, um, they had done a marvellous job me. And Fran, you were quite similar, you were saying, to when you took that fall, obviously in Wolverhampton, that and, and, and invariably finished your career. Indeed, Kevin, actually, that Wolverhampton did finish my career, but it was actually the fall in 2005 at the Curra. And, uh, yeah, I ended up in the exact same a uh, hospital as Davy the Matter and a very similar injury with that and they uh, had to get uh, obviously the traction and then the spinal surgery and uh, I think Davy the one thing I took from it anyway um, you go into that specialised unit and uh, the staff are unbelievable there but you, you got to walk over I got to walk over not a lot of people go in there and do that and I think it gives you a really s- important sense of perspective and just how lucky you have been I, I felt anyway Oh, absolutely! It was uh, like it's amazing. Like, and to be fair to the lads in there, they, they, uh, a couple of our colleagues had been in there that didn't uh, walk out, and uh, they were on first name terms with them, and that kind of sent it home to me. That uh, and ever since I've left the hospital, like I'm, I'm, I'm positive now. I'm absolutely delighted with the result of of what happened. Um, and they were just so good. Um, we were, I, I was just one of the lucky ones. And the, the, the doctor, I think, was saying something like 90% of 
or the same injury as us, uh, they, 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 they're, they're paralysed from it. So we're in the 10% bracket, which is a, a, a good, very, very good thing. In, indeed. And uh, what's the what's next steps for you, Davey? Obviously, I, I, I'm, from what I remember, you go back every couple of weeks to get a follow-up x-rays and it's just a week-by-week -week thing. Is that the plan yeah. going forward for the moment? Yeah, it's pretty much week by week. Um, I'm 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 just trying to give it uh, uh, every chance that I that I can. Um, I was taking CBD oil there for a while um, to try and generate um, um, to generate and put your smoke in there. <laughs> I, I was uh, I got it from um, from um, uh, Chanel 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 McCoy. So it's um, it's all it's past all the it does no. It does no oil. <laughs> We, we were thinking we were thinking you're a bit more chilled out than normal. <laughs> <laughs> no, Davey, you're mad that's, enough that's now as it is without taking any of that stuff as well. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I was probably accused of it now for long enough, but oh, I never ventured on that road, thank God. Um, I, 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 was, I, was, I, was, one, I was always always high on life itself, uh, Kev. But obviously you've been taking the CB, CBD island. Carry on, what else have you been doing? <laughs> Yeah, no, and and doing plenty of walk, and uh, after my last X-ray, it was time. The doctor says plenty of exercise now, and you know, nice and slow, obviously. So I'm trying to keep fit. Uh, we've loads of folds and mirrors and things in around, so I'm very much and keep kept occupied. So and uh, trying to do as much walking and and moving moving around as I possibly can without overdoing it, you know. And what exactly is it again, Dave? You just explain for people who who don't know the exact uh, damage you've done to the exact vertebrae. Yeah, so it was a T6 was fractured and we say the vertebrae is like that with the cord down. And uh, so it, the fracture went back the way, which was thankfully it, it, it broke back. So if I went in this way, I was in uh, bother, but it, it broke, it fractured back the way. So they had to put that in and stabilize. It was an unstable fracture. So the, that's where the operation came in. So they, they, they bolted this, put screws in that, and then the vertebrae below that was damaged as well. And then the T1 was dislocated. That was the one that they had to put me on the traction for. So um, I'd say it was just a complete bang down from on the top of my head, just completely, I, I'd say I hit the ground square on with the top of my head. And uh, that uh, created uh, the problem. And um, so, but I, I'd movement. I, it was like when I hit the ground, it was like you set a firework off in my thumb and my index finger. It was just like a, a flash of a flash of, of of pain out them two fingers. And then I kind of thought that my shoulder was dislocated, um, but it wasn't. But I was always, I was sure when I hit the ground that that I'd done damage somewhere and. The um, Order of Malta guys came in and they were just top class. So I was just very, very lucky that I had the people around me in so fast. And then into Limerick and I had some great doctors in Limerick um, looked after me. And I think the one thing I did realise was that the doctors that are working at the races and even not at the races, that, that there was one, one particular doctor got up off his seat and drove in he got, got left home and drove in to make sure I was okay. Um, he saw the fall, so he um, it was just I just realised how lucky we are as an industry to have the medical um, people around us. Yeah, it was brilliant, and for all them reasons, then everything just went smoothly. Yeah. And Davy, you were you were you were out relatively quickly out of hospital. I thought, and I think Forty Dell and yourself thought as well that you were going to be in there for a week or 10 days, but you were out, I think, what, three or four days later, was it? Yeah, very fast. Once I got up from the... I, I, I was determined that the sooner I get up um, off the, uh, out of the bed that, and moving, that the quicker I'd get out of hospital. And uh, that was the case. They were pretty confident that everything went well. The odd extras were good. And uh, I was up and moving around within, you know, hours after the operation. I think that was a big help. And Davey, after, you know, but yourself and Fran have said, right, 90% of the injuries, of, of, of that injury basically ends up with paralysis. Lying in that hospital bed in a couple of days afterwards, obviously, when does it, do you start to come to think, is this worth it? And I know you're mad to come back, but does it, does it start, do you start thinking about it? 
No, no, I never actually thought about it. And um, look, I, I'm as the fella says, I'm on the back nine. I'm heading for the eighteen, uh, as good as uh, you know. Uh, so, um, but I worked for worked really hard to be in the position that I'm in, and it's just to have a great association with such a good trainer and some fantastic owners. I, 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 I never crossed my mind. The only thing that crossed my mind is. When can I get back? Um, I, I just, you hear these stories about all these marvellous horses back along the years and, uh, and I think Gordon has some of them in his stable at the moment. I think he's got some of the best horses in the world uh, at the moment and I just, um, I'd love to be riding them and I, I don't think I ever thought that this was going to stop me. Do you know what I mean? But I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not thinking that way anyway at the moment. So, I'm pretty, pretty uh, gung ho trying to get back and um, get fully fit to ride some of these horses in, in in the second half of the season. And Davey, regards your rehabilitation when obviously the brace is taken off. Hopefully, in two weeks' time. What's the plan then? Uh, what sort of uh, regime will you undertake to get fully fit again? Yeah, there's loads. Um, I suppose we're lucky now, and especially in this country, uh, there's loads of um, these new uh, chambers that we can now visit, we'll say, that should generate, should make the healing process a little bit easier. Um, so there's a place in Galway that uh, it's a flotation uh, thing, so I, I plan on visiting that um, a couple of times, and there's another oxygen chamber down in, um, down in Bandon, I think, that... I spoke to Wayne Lorden about that uh, helped his he speeded up his healing during the year he had a slight injury. So um, I'm going to take all of them. I'm going to try them all. And uh, whether the ice, I, I've, I, I've done the the cryotherapy before, and that has all helped me an awful lot and uh, really speeded up my my re- my recovery as well. So. I suppose I, I'm in the hands of the doctors and the X-rays to 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 when I can return. But um, I have it in my head uh, once I see, after Christmas I'm and I'm good to go and start re- rehabilitating. I I I've, I I'm going to visit all these all these um, these um, new 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 things that we have available to us in this country. And David, the flotation chamber. Just explain to us what that is. Yeah, it's it's literally like getting into um um a big bath and the clo- and it's co- it's it's full of salt um so you float inside in it um so um it relaxes all your all your muscles and you can your movement is an awful lot better so they close the top and you stay in there for about you stay in there for about twenty half an hour and a lot of the GA players use it um to for after after games to 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 relax all their muscles I'm I'm probably going to be in a position when I take this off that my neck is not going to be as flexible as it was so it's going to take a good bit of work. And uh, I, I hope something like that will um, will will speed up my getting the flexibility back. In. Davey, we've seen the Snapchats at what ten, eleven o'clock of a winter's night. Uh, just to confirm that you are quite mad of you standing. Of course, you live alongside the beach, really, in y'all. And with leg and ankle injuries, you've uh, often sent us videos, Snapchats at night of standing in the sea <laughs> in the depths of winter with your. Yeah. Jeans or tracks you pulled over your knees. I, I I was there today and literally went through my head. How am I going to get into this up to my neck? Of all the injuries, I, I hate <laughs> cold water. It's the one thing I absolutely detest. And now I'm going to have to face into that <clears throat> neck this time. But uh, I was actually looking out on it today. Would you believe? And uh, just kind of uh, dreading getting into it. But it's it's a huge healer. So. Uh, Anything that will speed up, to, well, not speed it up, but maybe just help it along the way. To be fair, though, on a serious note, we that is true, Fran. We have set, got snapshots <laughs> of Davy Russell at ten o'clock of a winter's night, and he's standing inside. What was the Andrew Lynch one? Do you remember that up around Bettingtown? Yeah, was it? They called. The, didn't they call the Coast Guard? Because uh, they, they, they saw someone uh, entering the water quite late at night, but Andrew was co- have to come back from the races, I think, some evening, and and uh, tipped on into the, into Betty's town or somewhere like that. Dipped into the water, and I think they called the coast guard or someone to, to check him out. But little did they know that Andrew was mad anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
Da är det David Rosler, tänk fram. Nej, han är uppe. 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 Han är for healing injuries, leg injuries, and ankle injuries that you've had, and numerous of them down through the years. Yeah, they say there's a certain time of the year, uh, from September until about February, that the iodine in the water is really, really strong from the seaweed. Uh, so there, 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 just four or five months there that the, the iodine in the water is supposed to be stronger than the rest of the year. Um, so that's why I think uh, during the winter months, it, it can be an awful lot better for you. Yeah. So I'm so told. That, well, we've learned something new tonight, anyway, Fran, haven't we? Indeed, indeed, yes, yeah. We'll all be going swimming in the sea now on the way home to Dundalk tomorrow, tomorrow night. <laughs> tomorrow night. <laughs> I'll wait for you. You can jump out, and I'll keep the heaters on the car. <laughs> Let me know how you get on. Indeed, and Davy, just talking about them horses that you're looking forward to getting back. I don't know where to start with them, Kevin and Violin, I suppose. Yes, I suppose the obvious one to start off with. Davy is electric the other night, wasn't he? In the in the other day, sorry, in the Drinmore. Yeah, he actually he actually gave me goosebumps watching him. He was I don't care about the opposition, but at the same time, they weren't they weren't selling players now. The, the, all the three horses behind him were rated one forties over hurdles, you know, high one thirties over fences. So um, they're useful horses, you know what I mean. And uh, he just showed that bit of class that he has there after landing at the back of the second last to show that 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 acceleration down to the last and the beauty of it is the way he jumps you know ju- jumping is 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 a help to him rather than a hindrance he's just outstanding to jump um from start to finish he he goes i was trying to say it last year that he he can put himself in neutral in a ra- he can run a bit keen at times but he can also put himself into neutral fairly fast but every time he sees a fence, he just pricks his ears, gains a couple of lengths, and shuts down the engines again. He's just, he's just, just a joy to watch, and he's a joy to ride. He's an, an exceptional horse to ride. So I'm um, uh, really looking forward to getting back on him. Um, he's, he's, and Jack is, and I must say too, like Jack missed quite a bit of the season last year as well, and I was lucky enough to fill his boots. Then, like I rode a festival winner on 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 Sam Crow, that would have been one of Jack's. So I'm 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 of the opinion Jack deserves a, you know Jack what Jack is getting at the moment he deserves it you know so but finger crossed I'll be back sooner rather than later you know I don't want him to get too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and Davey, tell me this: of all the good horses you've ridden down through your career, and there's been a lot of them, how high does this horse rest? Oh, he's very high, Kevin. Like he has to be. You know what I mean? He's 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 unbeaten, um, and he just has an uncanny way of not being overly impressive. He he just he, he wins his races and uh, he saves a bit for himself. Um, but I just think the way Gordon is such a big key to him as well. You know, and the lads in the yard, um, he's just he's just very very good. Um, he puts a race to bed very very fast. And then kind of just just keeps keeps a bit for himself at the finish, which is always a good thing. And Davy, what's what what trip? What do you think is his ideal trip? He seems to have everything. He seems to have speed, but he seems to stay. What do you think is his ideal trip? He doesn't have one, Kevin. He just has endless endless amounts of ability. He's got bags of pace and loads of stamina. Um, I just think he can handle any ground. He could handle the depths of winter to pretty much as quick as we get in national hunt racing now which is beautiful good ground um nothing seems to phase him um i i, I can't see a flaw in him I, I i just can't i just i i don't ever want to see a flaw in him you know and i'd imagine he gives you some feel throughout a race does he absolutely he just he's never doing anything but a half speed or he's he's just He's just giving you the signs of if I want to go, if I see where I want to go, and it's a lot of the time in horses, you're kind of wondering, geez, I'd love to be a half length close, or I'd love to be a, cl- a length close, or, or, you know, with him, if you want to be a half length close, or just let him, just give him an, an inch of rain. And the only one thing with him is, I'd be afraid just to open him up too early. 
you know what I mean? Because he, he responds to, to, to an inch of rain, he responds to it fairly rapidly, you know. And Davey, another one, uh, I know you rode this horse when Gordon Mouse bought him, was Zan, Zanny here. Uh, you went in the road him and make Halfords. He looked very, very good when winning the juvenile hurdle the other day. Yeah, he's, he in my books is, I, I, I love that horse. I really do. Um, I loved him the first day I sat in him. And then he he went back. I didn't ride him then for a couple of weeks. And uh, he was after being gelded in, in the meantime. And he just changed completely. Like he just, he just turned in, <laughs> they took his manhood away and he turned into a man. Um, do you know what I mean? His jumping is exceptional. He's, he, 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 he he's, more he he's he doesn't he never rode like a like a flat horse he he always rode like a, a national hunt horse with with flat ability if you know what i mean which is a huge thing in them juvenile hurdlers but he he he, he rides like a man now rather than a, than a juvenile do you know what i mean he's he's very mature in his ways and uh he loves jumping and again he's got an awful lot of stamina um with 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 the right amount of pace to 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 go along with it and Davey, I would have thought looking at him, again, going back to what you said, I think a key point, he's not your typical juvenile. This horse has a lot of size and scope about him, doesn't he? And I'd imagine that he's a work in progress. I think there's a lot more to come from him. Yeah, I, I, I actually feel that um, he, he just seems to be the horse that a typical one of uh, mouses and, and gardens, when they buy them horses, they, they always try to buy the frame that they're hoping a horse would fill into. And... Nine times out of ten, when Gordon gets them, they, they fill into that frame and they become good. But he's got the frame of a of a big, strong horse, and I feel that as time as the season continues, um, that he'll fill into that frame. And by the time we come to March, April time, you and he fills into that frame, he could be he could be really dangerous. And presenting Percy, great to see mm. Percy back in the winners' enclosure. He's very good at Thurlis, isn't he? Yeah, excellent. He's he's. I I, I think maybe the the fall in Cheltenham might have left its mark on in Down Royal. Um, but he made huge progress from Down Royal to Turles, which is a great thing to see. Um, he's I've a, he, he's a real soft spot with me. Um, Percy's been so good. Um, every time I rode him, and um, he just seemed to have that sparkle back in, in Turles. So hopefully that can continue because his work at home has been very good. Um, and you know he's sound and and enjoying life. It took him a while to settle into gardens now, would you believe he was quite bold uh, when when he arrived, and it it took it definitely took until down royal for him to settle into the regime up there. But he seemed to have settled in there well now. Davy, what I loved about him is the way he kept quickening under Jack between the second last all the way to the line of Harlis. Yeah, he ran at the last and landed and and, and took and, and went again at the back of the last. So he, he he never came back in underneath him. Do you know what I mean? So, um, like it's, sometimes you'd question whether he really stays, but then you go back and look at the days he was really good. You know, he stayed well in Gorn and he stayed well in Cheltenham when he won the RSA. He stayed well when he won the Pertemps. But at times he just um, he just didn't do that. He just didn't land at the back of the second last and run to the last and run at the back of the last. He didn't always do that, but when he does that, he's very, very good. And Davey, I know you came down two out in the Gold Cup this year. You were running a big race. Very hard to say, but you, you didn't think he'd have won, but you thought he'd have been bang there and he wasn't done when he came down two out. Yeah, I felt it. I, I, I didn't feel, oh, we have a little visitor in here now. A couple of visitors. Cowboy. Oh, cheers, he's got the horse and all. Look. <laughs> Let me show you this. Look, look what's coming to join me. <laughs> what's the name of your horse, Liam? Little Tito. What's his name? Um, what's what's the name? Tell the name. Say the name. That's Twinkle Toes. Twinkle Toes. Twinkle Toes. I thought he was going to say Envy Allen. My wife was actually given out to me earlier on today um, for upsetting a Zoom meeting of her own. She's a teacher in the local school, and uh, no, I think we're going to have a pleasant evening together. <laughs> <laughs> after that, after that burst in the door there. <laughs> but anyway, getting back to presenting Percy quickly, uh, yeah. 
you thought he was running a big race and he wasn't done when he came down two out? No, I felt, <coughs> I felt uh, himself and Mona Lee had met quite a bit during the year and um, I felt I would have finished where Mona Lee finished or, or in front of him, behind him and around that area. I, I couldn't say whether he'd have won or not. I, I, I don't know. Um, but he definitely would have felt uh, he would have finished similar to Mona Lee, I felt, and that would have got him into bang there. So that's what I was going on. So, you know, that's that's where I felt he was going to finish. And Davey, presenting Percy, all things being equal, I know there's a lot of water to go under the bridge between now and Cheltenham. Do you think he can improve that little bit more this season on the back of what he's done in Thurless? He doesn't need to improve that much more to be a Gold Cup horse. Do you think he could possibly win a Gold Cup? Oh, I definitely, definitely think he could win a Gold Cup. But as you will know, it's we're in an era of some very talented horses, and we, have, we you must always look at a horse that's, that's looking like he's he's going to win his third Gold Cup in a row. And there's some fantastic chasers of last season's novices to come out that looked, which looked like a very good bunch in Manila, Indo, Alaho, and um, and uh, Champ, who who <coughs> finished. At the festival, so it looks like it is going to be a hell of a World Cup this year. And you know, all things said, Percy will want to be he'd want to be getting there wearing his best suit. You know what I mean? But there's no doubt he could. Um, there's no doubt about it. He could, but he'd definitely want to be at least tie on that day. <laughs> and of course, Philip Reynolds, he gets such a kick out. Of it. And I know yourself and Philip go back many, many years. You're very, very close. And he's a he's a great owner, isn't he? He is one of the best. He's a fantastic man himself. And his wife, Anne, actually owns Presenting Percy in a kind of a roundabout way. So it's kind of Anne we all need to answer to. But <laughs> um, to be part of it, it's uh, fantastic. Abby, his brother, is a huge part of it. And he has got a couple of very close friends that uh, have ventured on the road and been looking in over the ditch Um this year at, at Percy. So he actually hasn't gone to the race on his own. Obviously they didn't enter the race course, but they did they did look in over the ditch at Turles to watch him jump to second last, which is was just brilliant to hear because, you know, his love for the sport is fantastic. His father before him and all his family around him, I think it's just it's just great to be a small little part of it. And obviously the Savills chase at uh, Leperstown, that's the next intended target. And of course a rematch with Delta Work, Mona Lee there's very little between them last year. I think there was only what, three lengths between them last year. And it all bodes well for a thrilling uh, grade one at Christmas at Leperstown. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's, 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 it's all, all, all roads lead to, to Leperstown now at, Chilton, or at Christmas. So, um, uh, you know, I can't wait to see it, to be honest.